coming up, we're going to be talking about the Eternals release being dependent on the success of Shang-Chi, plus Doug Days and a brand new Walt Disney World special. But before we get into any of that, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hi everyone, it's Roger here from what's on at DisneyPlus.com. It's Thursday, it's time to jump into some of today's big Disney Plus news. And the first big one really is, and it's kind of not really too much to be expected really, but next week Disney are going to be releasing Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's going to be available only in cinemas. Now will be there for 45 days before it can go anywhere else. They haven't really yet confirmed if it's going to be going to Disney Plus after 45 days or if it'll be going to like a premium rental, premium purchase. Um, that's a little bit still a bit fuzzy. But after 45 days, they can do what they want. And really, the success of that movie is really going to make a big impact on future releases, especially over the coming months, um, just with the pandemic as it currently is. And the box office is really just kind of, you know, it's struggling to get to a certain level. It's, um, and so depending on how Shang-Chi does, will depend on what happens to Eternals. Now, there's been reports that it might be delayed if it, the box office numbers isn't up, but then how will that impact on Spider-Man or the Disney Plus series? You know, next year they've got loads of other movies coming out, like the Black Panther sequel, you've also got um, the Marvels, and you've got the next Four movie, and Doctor Strange. So if they keep bumping things back, things are just going to keep moving back, and they don't want to be doing that too much more. Um, but ultimately, you know, if the money's not there on the table, they're going to have a problem. Now, I also suspect if um, Shang-Chi doesn't do incredibly well at the box office, and they're kind of predicting at the minute it could be the lowest um, box office numbers since um, The Incredible Hulk. Um, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily reflect on the actual movie itself, because hearing lots of great things about it, I can't wait to go see it next week. Um, but it is this kind of situation of they're going to be looking at, you know, how did their movies do on Premier Access with like Black Widow being the key point. And also got like Jungle Cruise and Cruella. They can kind of look at it and go, look, we need that digital money because, you know, we need it to like bulk up um, the box office. It does cause other problems, especially with uh, sort of releases on like piracy and things like that. It can all have an impact with having a high quality version. You know, CinemaCon's been taking place this week and they've been really kind of pushing the idea of, you know, theater exclusive and it's the way to go. But ultimately, it's, that's their business. Their cinemas, that's what they want to do. Um, Sony's been very sort of uh, vocal about the idea of being cinema only. Disney's not even there. They've shown Shang-Chi, but they're not even at the event. You know, they're doing their own thing, and they're taking each title one by one. You know, they're not doing what anybody else is and making big statements because I think you know that's only a big thing. Obviously, a lot of talk about with what happened with Black Widow with the contract, but we've seen with Cruella and also Jungle Cruise. If they make other contracts and make good on it, it doesn't necessarily always go with the idea of what happened with Scarlett Johansson. Um, so that could be. A an issue that they need to deal with with Eternals before they make the announcement. Personally for me, I think um, during this winter it makes sense to kind of do the dual system, give it a little bit longer, see how it goes, um, and that way it kind of gives everyone a choice. I actually ran a poll on the channel yesterday to see what you guys thought. So I asked you, do you think Eternals should be released on Disney Plus Premier Access? And to be honest, it was a very close call, coming in at 53% for yes and 47% no, and that was with nearly over a thousand votes. There's a lot of different, we had lots of different comments in there talking about how they don't think it's worth the money to do Premier Access and they want to see it in the cinema with a bunch of people, but there's also a whole host of other people that don't want to go to the cinema, they don't want to do it because of the pandemic and you know there's there's this kind of whole weird thing going on with Disney Plus Premier Access you got a lot of people that go no no everyone has to go to theatres but maybe not fully understanding that not everybody likes going to the theatres we had an interesting comment on our Facebook group this past week where they went um, to see uh, Jungle Cruise and they were like well there was people making noises and people on their phones and they were chatting and it was they just didn't enjoy it and they regretted, they said they should have just done it. Print. And this is the difference, you know, I think that is a key thing. And I also think there's a massive difference between, you know, maybe if you go to cinema on your own or as a couple, or if you've got a family. I think families as well tend to like the Premier Access option as well. But I think this one's going to keep running and running, but it really depends on how well Shang-Chi does. But let me know in the comments below what you think of all of this. We also got a couple of new trailers today, including The Kingsman, which is going to be coming to cinemas only on December the 22nd. So this one is a prequel to The King's Man. And I'm, this one looked a lot of fun. It was a a red band trailer so you know plenty of swear words and stuff there so interesting enough um obviously in the us it won't really matter too much to disney plus because it will have to go to hbo before it can then go to hulu and all the rest of it 
But internationally, of course, next year we should expect to see it on at Disney Plus, depending on kind of pre existing conditions if they've got anything. But generally, we're going to start seeing this a lot more with the 20th Century Studio movies all heading to Disney Plus a lot quicker. But overall, it looks a lot more of the same thing, and that can't be a bad thing. And hopefully, they finally get it released because this thing has been sort of swinging around with so many release dates, it's unbelievable. I think it's until like its fifth or sixth release date. That's how long this one's been floating around. They just probably want to get it out there. And ultimately, as well, with um, the 20th century movies, they can't really do premiere access, so at some point they just got to put it out there. Let's move now on to Doug Day. So this was a brand new short series that's going to be coming to Disney Plus on Wednesday the 1st of September. There's going to be five shorts. They're all about five to eight minutes apiece. I have seen them all. We saw the new trailer today. Very short trailer. Kind of surprised they've left this one go so long because it's literally only a few days away from coming out. If you enjoyed Up, you're going to love this one here. Doug is at his crest. You've also got um, Carl in there. There's one episode with Russell. Just, it's just fun. They're all about, like I said, about five minutes apiece. It's just a continuation of Up. And if you like um, Russell and you know all those different characters, you really can't go too wrong with this one. I'm surprised they're kind of dropping all five at once. I think it might have been cool to maybe spread them out a little bit. But they're top quality. Um, I really enjoyed watching them today. You can find my full review over on what's on at DisneyPlus.com. But yeah, that is a really cool one. It's nice to see this one being announced because apparently it is International Dog Day today. But let me know in the comments below if you are excited about Dog Days coming to Disney Plus. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Recently, it was revealed that Marvel Studios has set up some new mini studios to develop animated projects for like Disney Plus. And we got word that there's a brand new one currently in development. Though it's very important to state this one is still very much a Rumor, nothing has officially been confirmed. This was coming through from Daniel RPK, who um, is a very well-known industry insider. We don't know too much about the series, other than it's going to be um, following a protagonist who is a reportedly a teenager, aged between 14 and 16, and her brother as they travel on a road trip of some sort following the death of their father. They will then be accompanied by an artificially intelligent character. During the series, the three characters are expected to encounter a number of interesting and fun situations that will further an overarching plot of the series that will bring them closer together with a tone that is reminiscent of the Avatar The Last Airbender series. As I said, it's still very much in the early stages. Nothing has officially been announced there, but it wouldn't surprise me, you know, Marvel are working on a number of different projects and maybe they can kind of stretch out and do something new. But if you think you know who those characters might be, let me know in the comments below. And finally, let's talk now about a brand new special, which is going to be coming soon, all about the 50th anniversary of the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, one of my favorite places in the world to be. Love it there, been there so many times always know I'm going to be going back always have a great time there and it's nice to see this one being announced it's going to be coming on October the 1st to ABC in the US it will then be following the following day on the Hulu they'll be coming to Disney Plus at a later date that's obviously for the US they haven't announced how it'll be released internationally but I suspect it will be you know they want that and um, publicity this special will be hosted by Disney legend will be Goldberg who will be taking us on a journey spanning half a century and beyond at Walt Disney World in Florida the show will also feature spectacular visuals and musical performances from Christina Aguilera and Hayley Berry in front of the legendary Cinderella Castle at Walt Disney World. Throughout the special, you'll see exclusive interviews with iconic actors, actresses and athletes, plus Walt Disney World cast members, Disney Imagineers and executives past and present who have all played a unique part in sprinkling pixie dust all over the most magical place on Earth. The special event will take viewers through the Walt Disney World's humble beginnings as a swampland in Florida to the evolution into the cultural phenomenon that it is. This special will also spotlight some of Walt Disney World's most memorable pop culture moments from many of the different sitcoms they've appeared in. I know for myself for this two hour special I'm really excited to see this one here and hopefully as I said it will be available on Disney Plus soon enough and we get the official confirmation why Disney don't do this and kind of make a big announcement of it all at once but obviously they want to push people to ABC in the US but yeah it's just nice at least to acknowledge Disney Plus it's all over the place in terms of the publicity that they do it just really drives me nuts why they do this thank you very much for watching this video make sure you go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com like follow and subscribe also a huge thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and also on our YouTube channel memberships and I'll just see you guys in another video. Laters.